Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Wendy. I'm just bringing you a quick Shaman Tanked in-depth guide about everything when it comes to races, abilities, what you want to use on certain bosses when it comes to runes, and just kind of further information into the builds. Right now with Shaman Tank, there's only three races you can play as, which is Troll, Orc, and Torin each have their special racials or special kind of things to them that make them better than others. Right now, if you're looking for more stamina build, for more survivability, of course, you're going to go Torin. This brings the racial of endurance. Again, that gives you the more health pool. And it also has War Stomp, which is great for AoE pulls, kind of, you know, stomp, shock everything. It basically stuns every target for three seconds. So, you know, you get all the aggro on them, pull them towards you. You can go Orc. This has Axe specialization. This just gives you a couple more points into you using axes so if you are going to go orc it might be better for you to use axes you also get blood fury which is giving you a damage boost but it's also giving you 50 percent less chance of healing for 25 seconds so some bosses it might cost you your life it might be useful though troll is the last race these ones bring a great racial called berserking this just increases your attack speed for some time and then the other downside of it is they bring beast sling there's really nothing right now inside bfd that you can use it for except for one boss maybe but if that it might not even be that useful next we're going to look at what type of runes you want to be running as a shaman tank there's a different variety. You're gonna wanna have Way of Earth on. It's very easy to obtain the Barons. This one's just gonna give you basically turn your abilities such as Earth Shock into a taunt for you. It also gives you on top of that a 30% more health pool. Other things that you'd like to run, if you are looking for survivability, you would run Shield Mastery and you would throw on a shield. This gives you 15% extra block chance without any other bonuses. So this might be useful for you. Right now, you're not really getting hit that much or that hard in BFD, so I would recommend running Dual Wield. You throw on double Rockbiter weapon, so you're getting increased amount of threat. But then you would also have to run Dual Wield Specialization on your chest piece rather than Shield Mastery since you're not using a shield. When it comes to the hands, these are runes that I personally swap on each different boss in BFD. So some bosses I'll throw on Molten Blast just because it's kind of the AOE, kind of there's more adds and I can hit all of them at once. Single target bosses, I'll throw on Lava Lash. Bosses such as Gamura, I'll throw on Lava Burst with Overload on my chest just so I'm getting that increased chance of proccing and i'm also doing more damage because the bubble that he has you can't do a lot of melee damage that is a little iffy sometimes because your threat's not going to be as good but you still will hold number one threat no matter what so again the runes are up to you a hundred percent whichever way you like to play the game if you want to go to shield mastery you want to just try to you know try to do all the new stuff that shaman has offered in sod you know it, it's very up to you me personally, I am I like parsing, so I'll go out of my way to try to find the best runes to throw on for each boss. Very quickly, just something thorough that we'll go over. Doesn't have to be crazy. Right now, it's a stat priority for Shaman Tanks. You do want stamina, but it's not something that you're going out to get right away. It's not something you need. Like I said, bosses aren't hitting that hard, so it's not really worth. So right now, you really want to focus on agility, into strength, and then into stamina. These three are just, you know, boosting your threat up, boosting your damage you're doing. So you're not just tanking, you're also, you know, popping off when it comes to DPSing so you can help carry through the raid. Then you kind of want to get into intellect. That's just going to give you that mana. And then armor and hit rating. Those right now, you don't really get a lot of armor rating just because we are on the 25 bracket. There's not so many pieces that you can get for high armor rating. And then again, with hit rating, all we really have right now is the BFD boon. And then on top of that is the epic gear that you're getting from your professions. That's giving you a little bit of hit. So those are just quick little things about the stat priority and what you want to look for in a shaman tank. Yeah, I just want to get into the quick rotation. When you do pull a boss, you want to pop flame shock right off the bat and then cast molten blast because with flame shock up, there's a 10% chance that this resets the cooldown of molten blast. So you can keep pressing molten blast, keep generating more threat. As you also go in, if you don't have another shaman in your group, you want to be dropping the right totems. Right now, Strength of Earth Totem and Fire Nova Totem seem to be the only two because your mana pool isn't crazy high. So with dropping totems like on repeat, such as Fire Nova Totem, it's kind of not worth it because you're just oom. And then if someone rips threat off you or if someone accidentally taunts, you have a pet taunt, it's very hard to get back. When it comes to Strength of Earth Totem, that stays up for two minutes, so you drop it. Most bosses are lasting 30 seconds to, I would say, 45 seconds. 
maybe longer ones such as Calrus, it might last a minute 30. You can also apply Frost Shock if all the targets have Flame Shock on them. And if you have enough mana where you can throw in Lightning Shields, again, that's just increasing your threat, increasing everything for you survivability wise. If you do have the extra mana to spend, I would say throw it on Lightning Shield, throw it in Frost Shocks. Or if you just keep getting procs of Molten Blast, just keep throwing Molten Blast out there. As I said with the runes, this rotation is situational. So if you are rune swapping, you might not be running Molten Blast. You might be running Lava Lash, Lava Burst, you might, you know, different things that are good for different bosses. So just be on the lookout for that. But you're still going to be flame shocking. You're still going to be dropping the same totems. So you're still going to be looking out for those things. But your rune is the biggest thing on if you're casting Molten Blast, Lava Lash, Lava Burst. And then finally, I kind of want to just get into professions and maybe some consumables for the Shaman tank. Right now, there's not really professions that are worth going out and getting that are going to increase your threat. Besides maybe engineering for the heavy dynamite, but that's for AOE damage. A lot of these are just single tank bosses. They're just, you know, tank and spank. There's nothing that you need to throw down in AOE. Maybe Lorg is jet with those adds, but if you're running Molten Blast, you're already AOE damaging. So professions are completely up to you at this point. Uh, I would say run leatherworking. You do get the gloves from leatherworking that give you that hit percentage and also, you know, increase your attack speed for a certain duration when you pop them. And then finally down into consumables. Great consumables for tanks right now. Strong Trolls Blood Potion, you know, the health regeneration. This is just giving you that throughout the whole raid. If you want Elixir of Defense, Armor reduces all damage dealt to you by boss melee attacks. And that also is stacking with a couple of your runes with Way of Earth because it's based on some armor. You can run Elixir of Firepower. And because a lot of your abilities right now are firepower based, which is like Lava Burst, you know, Molten Blast, Flame Shock. Those are all fire abilities. So if you run Elixir of Firepower, you'll have more standardized based threat when you're tanking. Other big things, Elixir of Lesser Agility. Again, agility is our number one stat prior right now. So the more agi we have, the better it is for you. Other things you can run, again, situational, free action potions, invaluable against bosses and enemies that have stuns. If you pop it at the beginning of Lady, you won't get frozen arrowed. You could just stand in her pool and tank it. Calrus phase two, you won't get chains on you if you pop it right there. Other good things will be like shadow protection pots. Those are really solid right now. If you pop that before Calrus, you take less damage. Going into Akamai, you take less damage. And then finally, for the last thing of the video, we are going to get into the talent tree for Shaman Tanks. You're going to want to go into right into the enhancement tree. You're going to go five out of five shield specialization, increases your chance to block attacks with a shield by 5% and increases the amount blocked by 25%. Again, this is up to you because if you are running a shield, I would say it's worth it. If not, if you're dual wielding, ancestral knowledge might be better, increases your maximum mana by 5%. So if you run it up to 5% mana or if you want 5% shield block, it's, it's totally up to you. Going down, you want thundering strikes. Improves your chance to critical strike with your weapon by 5%. So again, if you're dual wielding, you have a double chance. You're, you know, you're critting, 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 just getting all that threat. You're, you know, you're just pumping out DPS. If you are running a one-hander and a shield, this is also very, very good. You have rock biter in your weapon. You're critting. So it's the same type of aspect. You're going to go 5 out of 5 Anticipation. Increases your chance to dodge by an additional 5%. You want to be able to dodge. You want to be able to parry. You're tanking. The less damage you take, the better your raid's going to go because your healers are going to be not as oom. And they're not going to have to worry about just healing you when other people might be taking damage. And then finally, since you do get 16 points, we're just going to go 1 into Flurry. Increases your attack speed by 10% for the next 3 swings after dealing a crit strike. This works very well with having Thundering Strikes 5 out of 5 because the more you crit, the more flurry procs you get. Just the faster you're swinging and the more threat output you have, the better it is for you to be tanking any boss. Well, guys, that was the in-depth, quick little video. I didn't want to make it long and stretched out like some, but this is just a quick in-depth guide of Shaman tanking. If you did like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see down below. 40 Bracket is coming out, they said end of kind of january so when that does come out i'll have a new bis list rolling out i'll have maybe more in-depth guides when it comes to this i'll also have guides on other tanking classes so if you guys do like them like i said like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace